Hey guys, welcome to Deep South. I'm Wanda and today I'm going to try to take you on a full tour of Deep South before the pond. We're going to try and look at the property from all angles and what we have going on now and then we'll come back afterward and see what it's looking like in a week or so. Right now we're going to start at the house and I'm going to do kind of a garden landscape tour. Now as you can see here in the front Danny and I um, have put these lighter posts up and we had a sign and our poor little sign dropped to the ground so we need a new sign. On each side of the sidewalk now we have the um, lighter that runs down the sides on both sides as a border. In between we rake the leaves and throw it over in there and all these bushes that you see are huckleberry bushes that we transplanted about four or five years ago. We had an abundance of huckleberries this year from right here on our sidewalk. We did not have to go to the woods and I planted flowers. It's little yellow. I think it's lantanas all up and down there that give it some color. And when the leaves fall in the fall, we will rake them and throw them back in here and that mulches this with our own leaves. There's no chemicals added and everything looks great. Near the house is some um, crepe myrtles. They're purple or lavender color and we have them over here on this side. This side was nothing but dirt when I moved here. We've added a lot of trees and a lot of plants in here and it is starting to take hold. The grass is starting to grow and before long we hope to have a yard. And this is as we come to the front sidewalk. We have a retainer wall here. Scratch made homestead helped Danny build. We have some of our ginger there that is the pineapple ginger, my roses, our daylilies, and Danny's crepe myrtles. The barn sits off to the side and kind of down the hill a little bit. We have banana trees growing. We had a huge clump of them and we uh, gifted some to Freedom Makers to get started at her place. We've never had any bananas, but we're hoping this year maybe with the help of Grow Family Network, we might have a banana or two. We have a few pots over here left. We used to plant our butter peas and stuff in here, but we're gradually taking these down. We have some persimmons that are growing there. Uh, going to move the pots, have a little bit of asparagus in front of the pots that we're going to leave. Some of Danny's equipment. We have ginger. Two different types of ginger here. One of them is Hawaiian ginger. I believe that's this one right here. It's starting to come out in front of the banana plant. And this is just a I'm not even sure that this one might be an edible ginger, but I don't think so. As you come around, this is our front field. The cows have access to this whole field. There's a slight dip in the land there that is kind of a natural running water when it comes from the hills up this way. And it is our pasture for the cows. And of course there they are eating hay plus they have green grass so this is the field with the cows and all that from the barn area there's going to be a little work done here as we go along because this fence really needs some work done so we're debating on having a little bit of work done here and this is the greenhouse that we show very seldom around here but we show it we've had it for f about four years and it works great in the winter uh, it is out of polycarbonate panels and it works really well here in the winter time not so good in the summer now a lot of plants that we have to bring in from the house or the yard go in here we still have a moringa here and it stays we haven't taken it out my aloes. I've got multiple aloes in here. This is just one. Further down we have more. I have some turmeric. This is like the giant pineapple tree. 
It's a giant pineapple. I mean, I've never seen one get that big. So we're going to see what happens. We've actually harvested one pineapple off of it already, and we're just letting it go. We have four o'clocks. Don't know why, but four o'clocks are doing great. Aloe under there. Aloe back there. Aloe and four o'clocks here. Look at the aloe. And look at its babies. Lots of babies. Anybody needs aloe, let me know. We'll work out a deal. Shipping just costs, but it'll work. This four o'clock's going crazy. Another aloe. More turmeric and or turmeric. Malabar spinach. This stuff just seems to love this greenhouse. Danny built us a, a way to store things here and lots of times this is our drying racks here on top. The cows are not liking it because I'm not feeding them. And these pots, we didn't plant anything in the summer because it's just too hot. All these plants seem to like the heat and the humidity in here even though it gets really hot. And this is Danny's rain catchment system in here that also waters plants. So this greenhouse is on the side of the barn and it will house house plants and a few things this winter in here. One thing I'm very proud of is our lemongrass. I have this whole line of lemongrass that comes out and in a month it'll be waist high and just beautiful hanging there. And people ask, what do I do with it? I really, it's a border. We just think it's pretty, it smells good, and it's there because it has a lot of medicinal purposes. And in the future, if I need it, I am well supplied. Danny's planted apple trees everywhere, and here is one of them. All right, the backside, this garden, we're really doing nothing but letting it grow up. Danny will run through and disc again. We are not going to plant anything here till maybe fall. Um, we're just letting it go for now. We have more than we can handle, so it's time to let the land rest. In the background by the trailer, we have an olive tree. And then next to the little um, cage, we have two cedar trees that we planted. And we have a huge cedar tree in the foreground that you see there. Danny's tomatoes are still green in the tops. They still have small tomatoes. But they're kind of in a rest stage. We're waiting on it to see if these are going to turn in a little bit. And then the tomatoes will probably come out because we are tomatoed out. We have tomatoes galore. The okra has never gotten very tall. We kind of stunted it by putting it in between two tall things to start with. But it is still making okra. We're still getting to eat. We had some fresh last night. This is some of my peas. We planted... Um, Mississippi Crowders, I think. I think that's what it was. Something like that. We're going to check. These things are going to be producing flowers probably and start doing. Within the next couple of weeks, we'll start having some peas forming on it. The corn next to it is popcorn. And we had a very sporadic germination rate. So we're hoping have a few of these produced so that we can replenish seeds. These two rows are butter peas and they did great here last year. I put, I, I put up way more than I would need for two or three years but we decided to plant again this year and see how well they do. And let's go look at Danny's sunflowers for the sunflower showdown. Now he has one here that he planted them all down this trellis this one is probably three and a half feet tall. It's not quite to the four foot mark on that one, but you see this one is past the four foot mark. And some of the others are past the four foot. Some of them are just at the four foot mark. A little over four foot, four and a half foot maybe, on Danny's sunflowers, the mammoths here in the garden. This is the front lawn. Uh, when I came here seven years ago, this was all dirt. Uh, the grass has taken over. You can see how pretty and green everything is. I used to mow this yard and it was nothing but dirt with sporadic grass everywhere. 
and Danny's got some of his hay still here. He's trying to keep things from washing because this is a hillside. I don't know if you guys can tell it, but from the front gate right there, I'm standing probably three feet down already. It comes, the water comes down there. You see where the banana tree is there? This is where our hugel culture bed starts. When I came here seven years ago, the, this was all dirt and the water just rushed down and there were no trees, no nothing. So Danny came through right here and dug a long, like 60 foot ditch across our whole front yard. There was a ditch all the way. You see that mound, the ditch. Went all the way past that white building. That is our well. We came back in a year or two later. We had the ditch for probably a year. We came back when we heard of Hugel culture, which is a German word, filled it in with um, old tree branches, logs, dead logs he had in the woods, dirt, leaves, grass clippings, blueberry clippings. You name it, it went in here to fill this up. Then he put dirt on it and we have planted. Now, you can see right there, we have pineapples. We have grown pineapples on it before. We were going to try it again this year. We keep bringing them out. We put them, the pineapples up in the wintertime in the greenhouse, put them out in the summer. We have apricot trees here planted on the front side so that it catches water. As you come down, we probably have about 10 or 12 trees, five or six apricots, a peach, an apple, and a banana. This lovely little pile of dirt that's here in our front yard came out of the greenhouse. This had grazon in it. Obviously, lots of weeds are not affected by grazon. Lots of grass, there's grass in it. I planted sunflowers everywhere in here, so you see some of them are about a foot tall. We will see if the sunflowers grow in the grazon dirt. And behind the hugel culture is our um, pots. We did not plant anything in these pots this year because we intend to move them. We're going to be dumping the dirt out and using these pots in the um, one of the greenhouses and we're going to be using some over at the cabin so all these will go away and we will redo and put something else here in this area. This is our gate system that we have. On the left it goes into this field for the cows. Originally goats but since we swapped to cows this is our cows first field and there's a gate in the background that goes into the second field. We have paddocks for them to be moved around to. That is our entrance gate. And then we have where we can block off the drive here with fencing. So that they can transfer from that field. We have a lane. They just come through and go to the other field so they can cross over the driveway. And this is our front holler front field where our cows enjoy their hay, their grass, their weeds, their trees. They love it. You see they're very relaxed right now. They're enjoying the hay, laying around. Even little Minnie is eating candies laying down. The others are standing up. The babies are growing real well and seem to be doing great. And we have a mama that's due within the next three or four weeks. So we have Miss Dixie ready to calf. So we're on baby watch over the next couple of three weeks. When I came here seven years ago, none of this looked like this. It was totally, totally different. This is the blueberry orchard. It's luscious and green, full of blueberries. It was a red clay flat surface no grass when I got here. Danny planted 50 blueberry trees in that clay 
and the dirt from up here washed down. That's our natural spot where water comes down from way up there and the neighbor's property. This is our property, but it comes from up the hill, down through our property, down through here. And the water goes all the way down into our blueberries, which put silt and dirt in there and now we have grass and blueberries and it's awesome behind the blueberries we put Danny's um, cane meal up we've since cleaned this whole hillside off planted uh, peach trees and chestnut trees and things on this hill and we have plenty of room to operate the cane meal he's got some of his equipment here and it's looking really great but this is what he did to divert the water he's been playing all right i showed you the water's coming down this hill from up on our property and the neighbor's property there it comes down and it feeds our blueberries but what was happening was it would flood this area and it would go off this way and make a wash down here he did not want that wash in our pond so we've diverted the water here the blueberries will still get water it just will not be as flooded as it normally does because of the high rains but this goes into the pond this will fill the pond in a hurry so we're going to look at the pond from many directions here in a few minutes but this here this corner is where the water is flowing in and we're going to fix it where it continues to do that. The pond level will be down here. It won't be up there. It'll be down here. And this was our natural gravel pit anyways. And Danny's been getting some of the gravel before the guy gets here in the pond. This was our road that we had going back and forth. We're having to get rid of the road so Danny has filled in here, no more road on this side. And we're going to look at it from a different angle in a minute, but it's looking great here. We're going to be able to sit under these trees and have a swing under those trees, hopefully, if nothing happens. This is a back view of our greenhouses, our sugarcane, and the dirt that he got out of the pond area so that he can use that black dirt in our new greenhouse. And this is one of our mulberry trees standing in out here to the side from the greenhouse. These are the butter beans that we planted and with the rains we've had in the last few days it is washing sand and dirt in here big time. But they're beautiful and green. The sugar cane is growing. Danny is diverting the water behind the sugar cane now hopefully to save the beans a little bit and to keep from washing everything. And the Queen Dome. We are getting it ready for production. We have one bed that's half full of dirt Danny has brought from that dark dirt you saw. We're going to be amending it and then finishing another couple of three inches on top and we'll be ready to plant. The right side we haven't even started with. Got many projects going on but we hope to get the right side done within a week. In between the two greenhouses is our fig tree that is producing like crazy. And behind is a blackberry that we have, that we haven't moved, that we will move eventually. And right here in front of the Queen Dome is an apple tree. Danny uh, let this crab apple come up here, or planted it here and let it come up. And then he grafted an apple. And look at this. We have two apples on a crab apple tree. Isn't that awesome? We're just seeing if it'll make more in the future. So we're not taking this tree down. It's just to the side of the door. And he can still get in and out with the tractor until we build raised beds in there. 
This is the equipment yard. He puts all of his tractor equipment out here. Not all of it, some of it. We have tractor equipment everywhere, but this is some of it. This is the back side of the hugel bed. We're probably several feet down now from the front gate up there. And this is the back side of it. We moved this lighter pile and lighter it is fat pine lighter. It is great fire starter. We moved it from the other side of our property here about three years ago. Just kind of as a water break to keep it from washing here in this road. This is our hand pump well that we have. Our tractor shed that has turned into a wood splitting shed and beside it is the wood shed. This is our pomegranate tree. I'm really proud of it. It's as big as my hand. And this one. They're getting good size. One under here. I don't know if you can see this one. This one's bigger than my hand. It is huge. They're hanging everywhere. It's my, this is my first time having pomegranates on this tree. I'm really excited. This bed includes my Mississippi cream peas in the bottom and sunflowers in the center. And look at this. Some of these sunflowers we measured yesterday are almost 10 feet tall. They're beautiful. And then we have another apple tree. This is our older apple tree that we've had for years and years. And this year, at late freeze, we didn't, all the apples fell off, so we're not going to have apples this year. This whole side is going to be raised beds, starting with down past the pomegranate tree. That's where the spaghetti squash was. We're going to be changing it. It's going to have a raised bed there. The raised bed will continue down where the sunflowers and peas are, where the apple is. We already have our raised bed here. We just downed all the tomatoes, because we're tomatoed out, and another apple tree. This one, Danny grafted three different types of apples to, and he has each one of them growing on one tree. In the background, the kingdom. We have azaleas that hide the back deck a little bit. They need trimming. And we're going to be working here on this part. The peach trees that were here died this year. Both of them, you can see one in the background, the big one Danny took down. All this bed is going to be reworked now that the peach trees are gone. Coming all the way across the front, this is the bed that I just showed you. We're going to come all the way across, redoing all the way down because grass is taken over here. And nothing is really planted here except for some comfrey near the um, air conditioning unit. And the woodshed is full to the top. And we have wood everywhere that needs to be cut up. The crepe myrtles in the front always add a beautiful color to the front of Deep South. And this maple tree has been here for years and years, but one whole half of it's died. This side is staying in there. We'll see. Danny planted it in the center of the sidewalk and it's provided shade for many, many years. Gardenias that are planted, we have those planted all over the place. Nothing smells better than this. I love the smell. And on the back side of the hugel bed, we have some comfrey planted all over the place on this end, and it is growing and doing well. And that is what the back side of the hugel bed near the house looks like. This tree here is also a maple, but it is. I believe he said, oh, white maple, something like that. The leaves turn white. This is the back side of the sidewalk where we have our huckleberries and the petunias grow everywhere. More of the gardenias. We put this retaining wall up. When I came, there was no wall and the dirt just sloped down onto the sidewalk and you had dirt halfway across the sidewalk for the most part. We put the retaining wall up. I moved a daylily bed over here 
and they're not blooming right now they just quit blooming uh, they've been blooming for a couple of months but this whole thing is nothing but daylilies roses I've got some pineapple ginger that's fixing to start blooming I've got other types of lilies amaryllis all these things are planted in this area and the crepe myrtles the lavender crepe myrtles are planted in there join us for part two tomorrow thank you from deep south homestead